Hi friends, welcome to episode number 9 of our procurement and sourcing series. In this episode, we will continue to explore the additional capabilities within purchase agreement in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. With that note, let's quickly jump into today's topic. Yeah, in today's topic, we will be continuing the whatever we discussed already about the purchase agreement and we will be looking at some of the additional capabilities within purchase agreement, which will be handy for you in your day to day operations. So these are the three important functionalities which we are going to discuss in this video. First of all, what is Maxis Enforce? Using this particular option, you will be able to check the total quantity and amount for all the order lines in the purchase order. In the purchase order, you can have multiple order lines linked to multiple purchase agreements and those summation of the total quantity and amount can't exceed the remaining quantity and amount in the in the linked purchase agreement so the most important point here is the remaining quantity or the amount if you have not used any purchase agreement then the remaining quantity will be the same as the uh, quantity with which you have created the purchase agreement or if some quantity has been released and received then the system is going to go and check the remaining quantity available in the purchase agreement which you can go and check in your fulfillment section we already discussed about this in the episode number one and the second important functionality is price and discount is fixed because for some reason you have commit made a commitment to the, the vendor so that the vendor is offering you a special price and discount right so when you create a purchase order linking it to a purchase agreement it is you are liable to provide the committed price and the, the discount with which you want to generate the purchase order and you can you should not be allowed to change the price or the discount right so that's the reason this price and discount is fixed toggle will be used the price on the order line which is a purchase order line and the price on the related commitment must be same see so if there is any differences then the link between the purchase agreement and the purchase order will be removed automatically so you will be thrown a prompt you can either cancel it or if you click on ok then the link will be broken so these are the first two functionalities which we will see right now let me quickly go get into the d3 space screen so first of all i'm not going to get into details of how to create a purchase agreement and be kind of a bit moving fast um let me create a purchase agreement for acne office supply and uh, because we already discussed about this in the previous episode part one so i will strongly recommend you to check out that part one before coming to part two so this is a product uh, quantity commitment so that's completely fine so let's create a product quantity commitment again so i'll let me click on add line let me add an item number um, then let me add the site in versus 2 and 24 and give a quantity as 50 and uh, a discount percent of 2% for a unit price of maybe $150. Um, first of all, to enable the Maxis Enforce, you need to get into the gentle tab where you can see the Maxis Enforce toggle. Just enable this. So once you enable this, then you can clearly see in the help text also um, the quantity which you pro which you plan in your purchase orders cannot exceed the maximum quantity at the purchase agreement line and uh, also in the price and discount section you can see the price and discount is fixed so the moment i enable this the price which we have in the purchase agreement and the discount which we have in the purchase agreement should match the price and the discount in the purchase order lines if not the link between the purchase order and the purchase agreement will be removed so that's the reason of uh, using these two options. Let me quickly confirm this. Um, click on OK. I'll, I'm just going to release the order right away from here. Uh, let me release the order for maybe 10 quantity. And let me create a purchase order. So this will quickly create a purchase order. Uh, let's go to the purchase order and let's try to change the quantity and the price. And let's see whether are we able to get the prompt from the system or not. Uh, so system will throw an error message. Let me open it in another tab so that uh, we will be able to watch both the things parallelly let me go to procurement and sourcing purchase orders all purchase orders so here uh, what i'll do is here we have made a commitment for 50 quantity first i'm going to increase the quantity beyond 50 so what system is to thus let's see so right now uh, you can also see the purchase order approval status is in draft so because we have enabled the change management and uh, right now you can see the system has correctly picked the unit price as 150 dollars for a quantity of up to a quantity of 50 but we have actually released a quantity for 10 discount percentage is 2 and it amount is 1470 but for some reason if i try to change the quantity to 50 
still system is not throwing any error message but if i change the quantity to 51 we should get an error message saying changing quantity has created a conflict with the linked purchase agreement line because we have enabled max is enforced and also our maximum quantity allowed is 50 it cannot be more than that so let me click on cancel if i click on okay then the link will be removed uh, so let me click on okay first let's see how if, if i click on okay still the system allows me to go and proceed with the purchase order but if i go to update line um, if i once again want to create the link then i can go back then i can see the value over here but before getting into this let me also show you you can see here the unit price is 899 which is actually not our agreement the committed price right and uh, the discount is also not applied so now i feel like i just want to change the quantity to 10 and then uh, let me click on okay so immediately if i change the quantity you can see the link is automatically created and instead of uh, me going into update link update line and create a link so it's, it's the beauty of dynamics 365 where the link is automatically created once you change the quantity which is within the uh, permissible limit of uh, the purchase agreement and uh, a system also obviously would have checked the item number site warehouse everything and apply the unit price with which we have created the purchase agreement so next thing is like now since we have enabled the price and discount is fixed now let's go and change the price and discount let's say it's 150 dollar right so let me say i just want to i negotiated offline with the vendor now and then i want to change the price to 148 that will not allow us to do system will not allow us to do because you have made an agreement you make the changes in the agreement and then incorporate this, those changes in the purchase order that's the whole idea of this particular logic so if i change the unit price system will not allow me it takes us back to the 150 if i change the discount percent to one and still system will not allow us to do it because we have enabled the toggle saying the price and discount is fixed for this purchase agreement so either way when users are using it the admin can have the access or the purchasing manager or the sourcing managers can have the access to the purchase agreements with their accounts linked to the primary worker and the secondary worker and they will control the complete pricing and the discount policies of your organization and the users who are actually rising the purchase orders they will not have any hold in terms of changing the prices or discounts or quantity whenever they are creating purchase orders uh, linked to your purchase agreement so that's a fantastic operational control which uh, dynamax 365 is having and then next what we are going to see is uh, let me go back um, so go back to the presentation so here uh, the next functionality which we are going to see is minimum release amount and maximum release amount this is also one of the another important functionality within uh, purchase agreements if an amount is specified you receive a message if you make any changes to an order line that causes the order line amount to differ from the related commitment i know this might the explanation might sound a little difficult to understand the whole idea is you have the net amount in your purchase agreement and uh, also you need to specify the minimum release amount and the maximum release amount so let's go back to purchase agreement screen and um, if i go to general tab you can see the here here we have the minimum release amount and the maximum release amount what it actually does is for example the net amount that the net amount is committed over a period of one year right so we will not be releasing the entire amount of 7350 in a single order it should be in multiple purchase orders that's why in the if i go back to the person uh, um, our presentation even i have mentioned it over here specific quantity or amount by using multiple purchase orders so that's the whole idea of using purchase agreements not to release the entire amount in a single purchase or purchase order so so if you are going to release it in multiple purchase orders you need to have a control over how what should be the minimum release amount and the maximum release amount so let's say um, if the minimum release amount is thousand and uh, maximum release amount per order should not exceed thousand five hundred dollars so if any purchase order which got created that should have a minimum release amount release amount of thousand dollars and um, the maximum release amount should be fifteen fifteen hundred dollars and it should not exceed more than that so let me save this now let me go back to the purchase orders let me quickly create a new purchase order and then um, let me also select acme office supply then uh, select the purchase agreement i think it is 008 yeah it's 008 um, then let me select the site and warehouse 224 
hit the okay button so we are now creating the um, we have already created this purchase agreement for 2224 2 site and varos with the item surface pro let me select the item surface pro then um, what i'll do right now is you can see the net amount is 147 you should not you should not you should not exceed 1500 and at the same time the minimum net amount should be more than more than thousand um, dollars so if i change the quantity to 10 you can see the net amount is still 1470 which is within the limit let me change the quantity to 5 you can see on the top we are getting a warning message saying the amount 735 is lower than the thousand minimum release amount on purchase agreement because in the purchase agreement we have given a minimum release amount of thousand so so that the purchaser or the purchasing agent who is actually processing this purchase order will be notified that hey you need to process the minimum release amount of because in some cases vendor have a hold saying that uh, um, you need to process a minimum order value of thousand dollars or thousand five hundred dollars so that it is easy for them to process the order right so that's the reason he had actually offered a discounted price um so that's also a reason actually so let's say now it is 735 um but uh, let's say if i try to increase the quantity to 11 then also again we get a message saying the amount 1617 exceeds the 1500 maximum release amount so this is something which is fantastic you know um, maximum release amount at the maximum level also the purchasing agent will not be able to process the purchase orders at the minimum release level also they will not be able to do it so they need to make sure that the order value should be with well within the maximum and the minimum release amount so otherwise the you can very well you can also close this and you can remove the link and you can proceed but uh, whatever the order has been processed will not be tracked along with your purchase agreement so these are the three main functionalities which we have with the purchase agreements let me go to the next slide so here which i just want the one point some of the important points which i just want to highlight it regarding the purchase agreements or um, release orders from purchase agreements only possible for quantity commitments we have seen here since just because we have selected the quantity commitment we are able to release the orders from the purchase agreement but in another case let's say if i have processed a value commitment um, let's say let's do it for best supplier I'm just creating we already created a value commitment but at that point in time I have not showcased it to you but I thought I can also show this functionality because the whole idea is in case of quantity you will be able to update the quantity for which you want to release the purchase orders but in case of value until unless you create a purchase order you will not be able to know what value for which you need to process the um, purchase orders right so, so that's the reason whether in terms of product value commitment category value commitment or value commitment you will not be able to release the orders from the purchase agreement so let me click on okay so if you try in your in your demo data that uh, keeping the default commitment type as product value and you might be wondering why uh, why you are unable to do it um, it's, it's by design you will not be allowed to do that because uh, only quantity commitment you are allowed to do those uh, release of orders from purchase agreements so discount percent b2 then let me quickly save this then uh, let me confirm this so let mark as effective click on ok so now if I go to release order you can see the lines is not visible over here so that's the reason i told you only for quantity commitment you will be able to process the orders directly from the purchase agreement but in all other cases you need to make sure that as we discussed in our episode number eight part one of our purchase agreements you need to create the purchase order and link the purchase agreements whichever relevant to that particular vendor and another point is you can also attach remove link of the purchase order purchase orders from the purchase agreements depending on the various statuses whether the purchase order is in draft or approved or confirm irrespective of the status at any point in time you will be able to attach create a link or remove a link but only thing which you need to make sure this the combination of a vendor account site varos and the product dimensions meet the purchase dimensions whichever you have mentioned in the purchase agreement otherwise you will not be able to create a link and the third most important point is for purchase agreements you can also create a workflow uh, actually i thought of discussing this in the episode number one but if you go to um, procurement and sourcing module the, um, we have an option called procurement and sourcing workflow probably we will take this up as a separate series because workflow itself is requires a separate set of episodes because it's a wide topic 
if you want to create a new workflow specifically for purchase agreement make sure that you create a new workflow for purchase agreement approval workflow and whenever you create any agreement it has to go through an workflow approval and then only you will be able to use it and uh, the next option functionality which i want to discuss is regarding purchase agreements fulfillment report i think this report will be very handy for the purchasing managers or the sourcing managers in order to view at any point in time what is the um, status of the purchase agreements how much quantity is released and um, it is actually available under procurement and sourcing purchase agreements tab and uh, that is a report called purchase agreement fulfillment report i just want to highlight about this particular report because it will be very handy in terms of viewing the site warehouse and uh, whatever the whatever the you can publish it in the screen or you can also configure the, the printer and you can mail it or you can take a copy of it you can include the records um, to filter and uh, let's say if you get into this um, that is a vendor okay let's have let's go ahead with the same vendor account um, what is 1001 yeah 1001 is acme office supplies so that is completely fine you can make use of this report at any point in time and then uh, quickly generate a copy to understand what is the what are all the purchase agreements against a specific vendor or site or with respect to warehouse and uh, take what is the fulfillment rate how much quantity is invoiced released or received you will get a overall picture out of it right as a sourcing manager or a purchasing manager whenever you have conversations with the vendor this report will be very handy you can also export it to the excel and you can have meaningful conversations with your vendors in order to understand what are the purchase agreements currently you have and uh, if you want to make any changes to the existing agreements you can make use of this particular fulfillment report so let me go back um, so i think that's it for today we have already covered about the basic functionality of purchase agreements uh, in part one and the previous episode this episode number nine we covered about the basic other functionalities uh, capabilities which are available within purchase agreement try to use this in your day-to-day -day work or if you are working as a consultant i will strongly recommend you to work or play around with the demo data in dynamics 365 so that uh, you get uh, absolutely good benefit out of this series so but in the next episode probably in the episode number seven sorry episode number 10 we will be starting off with the purchasing policies which is another fantastic uh, functionality which is available within dynamics 365 uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel d365 talks or uh, follow my profile in linkedin to get notified whenever i post videos later to d365 f and o thanks for watching this video make sure that you also follow and practice all these core concepts in your demo data environment otherwise it is not easy for you to recollect and reproduce in your day-to-day -day business operations make sure that you subscribe to the channel and i will catch you soon in the next episode regarding purchasing policies until then sri ram Sarshankaran signing off